So uh, let's start with talking about photoelectron spectroscopy. This actually relates very closely to what we discussed in class on Friday before the long weekend. And what we were talking about is the energy levels of multi-electron atoms. So what we'll start with today is talking about the technique that's primarily used to actually experimentally figure out what these different energy levels are. And this is called photoelectron spectroscopy. And essentially what it is is very similar conceptually to what we were talking about way back in the first couple lectures when we were talking about the photoelectric effect. Because here what we have is some uh, atom that we're studying. In this, in this case, it's going to be a gas. And we hit it with a photon that has some incident energy, so E sub I, some energy that the photon comes in with. And if it has sufficient energy to eject an electron, it will do that. And our electron will be ejected with a certain kinetic energy, which is going to be whatever energy is left over from the initial energy we put in, minus what was taken up in order to actually ionize or eject the electron. So you can see how this can directly give us different ionization energies for any atom that we're interested in studying. For example, with neon, we can think about all of the different orbital energies we could be looking at. In the first case, so here is the electron configuration of neon. So we can think about what is our most loosely bound electron? What's that highest energy orbital? And it's going to be the 2p orbital. That's going to be what's highest in energy. So if we're going to eject an electron using a minimum amount of energy, that's where it's going to come from. So you can imagine that we'll actually probably have a lot of kinetic energy left over if we put a lot of energy in in the first place. We're only using up a little bit to eject the electron, then we'll have a lot left over. So one difference between photoelectron spectroscopy and, for example, the photoelectric effect is that in this case, we're not just looking at one energy level, which is what we were looking at from the surface of a metal. Now we're talking about this gaseous atom, so we can actually pop an electron or eject an electron from any single orbital that is occupied within the atom. So for example, it's not just the 2p that we could actually take an electron from. We could also think about ejecting an electron from the 2s orbital. Now this, of course, is going to take more energy because the 2s is lower. It has a more negative binding energy than the 2p. But that's OK as long as we put in enough energy. But what we're going to find is the kinetic energy coming out with the electron is actually going to be a little bit less, right? Because we had to use up more en energy to eject the electron, so we don't have as much left over. There's actually one more orbital that we could talk about if we're talking about this sample case of neon, which is a 1s orbital. And if we're talking about a 1s orbital, now we're going to be even lower in energy still. So that means the minimum energy required to eject an electron is going to be at its highest. So that means the energy that we have left over that turns into kinetic energy for the electron is now going to be really quite small. And what happens when you irradiate uh, one of these atoms that you're studying with this light is in photoelectron spectroscopy, you want to make sure that you put in enough energy to actually ionize any single electron that you have in the atom. So the way that we really make sure this is done is that we use x-rays. So you know that x-rays are higher frequency than UV light, for example. That means it's also higher energy than UV light. And if you Think back to our photoelectric effect experiments. Do you remember what type of light we were usually using for those? Does anyone remember? Yeah, it was UV light that we used. Well, we can't guarantee with UV light we'll have enough energy to eject every single electron, so that's why we use x-rays. They're higher energy. You can pretty much be guaranteed we're going to eject all of those electrons there. <laughs> 